Part two of serialization. Uh, let's get the player position, rotation, that kind of thing stored in in your data store. Because let's face it, you may want to have that functionality. You may want to know where your player was at the you know time of day, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to take a look at that after the fade. So if you look down below, there's a, a link um, to, to download this starter file here. So I have this uh, capsule here. This represents our player. And when we run it, you'll notice that this is this is where we had last time. And, and also, if you there's also a link down below to the, the previous video that uh, this, this one's actually based on. So this is the sort of uh, output that we had um, from our previous video. And this is a brand new sort of version of the scene that I did just for this particular video that we're doing just now, today, so to speak. All right, so our uh, everything's held in the main camera and we have a serializer object here. So I'm just gonna bring up, why do I have two versions? Uh, I'm gonna bring up uh, Visual Studio here and so I want to have a uh, I want to reference this uh, player's game object here. So when we go back into here, into the scene, uh, it now says player is none, and we are going to drag our capsule. Actually, we're going to. Uh, do we want to do that? Yeah, let's do that. We're going to drag our capsule to here, and this is going to give us our player reference that we need. Um, <clears throat> so uh, all of this code here is pretty much going to remain the same. We're not going to do much changing to this. What is going to change is inside our save data. So our save data, our actually serialized data, is going to change. And what we're going to add to that is we're going to add a public vector 3 position, public quaternion, rotation and we're going to have to do control dot there and add our unity references there Oops. check out that video when it's available um, okay so we have our uh, vector 3 position and our quaternion here uh, which is our rotation so inside the serializer um, we have our save data here, so our save data, I'm going to add this onto new lines so that we've got some room here. Um, so our armor is that, our items is that, and our position is player.transform.position, and our rotation, transform.rotation. Now you could also add scale and, and all that kind of functionality, but generally people's position and rotation in the world moves, whereas their scale tends not to move. So if you need to add that, then obviously you're gonna to have to add uh, another parameter to your, or another field to your save data. Uh, so that is our save data there. Um, and then we read it all back in um, I'm going to do some other functionality there, so I don't want to. I don't want to read it all back in straight away, uh, but I do want to save it uh, for now. So I am going to press play just to see what we have just now. So this is really just debugging it. So uh, it saves it out to here. So that was way too fast. I apologize. I didn't even explain what I was doing. Okay, so what I did was uh, I, I clicked on the, the console window and you notice that the console window says it's saved to a particular location. If I copy that value, so I just highlight it and I copy that location there and then I press Windows R and then I paste that value into there and then hit OK. Uh, 
Wait, no, let me do it now. Oh, okay, that's just weird. It just let me do it. Copy. Windows R. Paste. Okay, I don't know why it wasn't working there, but whatever. Um, so now we have our neatly formatted thing, so our neatly formatted file. So you can see that the name is Sloan, the armor is five, items is that array there, and then we have our position and our rotation. This is perfect. We can actually read this information straight off here. We don't need you know, any other you know, file reader or anything like that. We can just use Visual, Visual Studio. And we can also change it as well. I'm, I'm not going to change it just now. But you see that our new position information has been stored there and our rotation. Okay, so that's, that's great. So I want to now um, not have this functionality because I don't want to read, I don't, I don't want to uh, write out this functionality again. So now that we have that information there, um, because I want to show what happens when you read that value in and we can then change the, the player's position. Um, so here is this section here. So that writes out that section that I commented out. If you press, if you highlight something and press Control K C, so hold down Control Tap K Tap C, uh, and then it um, comments out that section there. Uh, it's called a keyboard chord. Where they come up with these names, I don't know. Um, so this is going to read in all the text files here and it is going to make a copy of it and then it's going to debug log out the name here. So what I want to do is I want to then set the player's position and the player's rotation. So if I do uh, player.transform.position equals copy.position and player.transform.rotation equals copy dot rotation what's going to happen when we run this so if I go back to the the, uh, the editor here and I press play nothing it, nothing's going to happen because this value here hasn't changed we haven't moved the player so let's say um, we have a save game and the player moves on and they decide to quit the game without saving it so they, they move to this point here. Uh, or you just have this, this is your player in its default position inside the level. So when we load the game now, uh, it's gonna load in the value from the JSON file. It's then gonna get the save data and then put it inside this instance variable here called copy. And then we're gonna set those values here. So this is our, this is our default start position for the level. Watch what happens when we press play now. Now it's going to load that the, the new values, which is the, the one over here, and it's going to place this value over here. So, and you see that now the, the lozenge has moved back over there. So when I press stop, you see that we're back over here. And similarly, if the default rotation as well, let's choose a wacky rotation. Let's say that the rotation is, is like that. So in the game, it's going to look, it should look like that when you start the, the game off. Uh, but of course the player has now played a little bit further into the game, so now they are at this position. And that's it, that's uh, player serialization. So there you are, that's uh, saving a player's location and rotation inside the, the world. Um, when you, you, know, you have like a default placeholder, that's where the, the player starts, so the, the initial player starting location. Uh, when you serialize it, that out, you are basically just serializing out the, the X, the Y, the Z coordinates. Uh, you're also uh, serializing out the quaternion, which is the X, Y, Z, and W components uh, of the, 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 um, the four parts of that vector. Um, and that gets serialized out to the file. And then uh, it's a matter of just reading them back in again. So if you missed uh, the, the first part uh, that we cover serialization, uh, then you can uh, feel free to check it out, uh, obviously. Uh, and again, I, I can't emphasize this enough. It, it, your time is valuable, so if you can, then uh, there should be a card up there anyway. 
um, or up there somewhere anyway. Uh, and then uh, come back to this video uh, once you've done that. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, and until next time, uh, keep coding. Thanks. Bye.